Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for a community of professionals that are looking to share, learn, and grow where you can talk openly and freely about the highs and lows in your business? If so, I want to invite you to check out my inner circle at AngelaProfit.com slash membership. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today, I am here with my friend Sheila Horvath. She's the owner and certified designer of Heavenly Treats for you. And I'm so excited for her to tell you guys about her background. I recently met her at a networking meeting that I was talking about technology, I think, for a local networking group. And they also were working with WedTech which is a, it's a technology conference for people in the wedding industry. And so I met Sheila and she gave out these precious little gifts and I had get so much stuff as a planner, but I will have to say it was different and it was unique and the way that the bow was and the way that it was branded. And then I don't remember exactly what it was. It was like some type of peanut brittle or so, but it was delicious. And I'm like, I have to work with this lady and I want her to do some gifts for my clients. And so Sheila, first off, thank you so much for being here today. Angela, it's so good to be here with you. I'm excited about the podcast and just getting to know the wedding industry and just finding out all kinds of neat things of what's going on in Nashville. So, yay. Now, do you only do things in Nashville or can you ship things? I know we're just kind of jumping in. No, we ship 48 states right now. Maybe in the future we'll be doing Canada, but right now it's 48 states. So, we do a lot of shipping, we do do a lot of local products. We have a lot of local clients that we work with. So love Nashville, though. That's awesome. Well, I know you're not from Nashville. And so I want to share with my audience a little bit about your background and where you came from. Well, actually, I am a Texan. And so we are transplanted here about five years ago. And the cool thing about my business is we started it 10 years ago, but this is our third time basically because we've moved a lot with my husband's business. So we restarted the business back in 2015 after we got settled here because I was like, I'm not sure I want to redo this again twice. You know, doing it two times is like, oh my gosh. But third time's a charm. Third time's a charm because Nashville has actually been a fabulous place to have a business. And so we're excited about the future here. That's awesome. Well, how did you get into the whole gift box basket industry? I mean, were you just creative and loved doing things for other people? Or how did you actually start and then make it into a business? It's actually a kind of a cool story. I always was very creative in our gifting. So when someone would have a baby shower, I would be the one that had a theme gift. So whatever, if it was a little boy, then I would come in with a little dump truck with, you know, that all the outfits matched and, and there would be anything that would deal with that theme. And then as my kids got older, I was a stay at home mom and I always kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit. And so I was always dabbling in little things and trying to start a little business here and there, but we volunteered at the school. So I did a lot of PTA uh, gifts and for the teachers was on the committees for the event planning. So I would plan the big dinners for all the new coming members and then all the teacher gifts. So we would line up a big table in my living room and we would put together a hundred little gifts for every holiday for the teachers. So that kind of set me up for 
having a gifting business. Then kind of fast forward, we started doing some things at our church because we were leaders in different ministries. And one of the things was I decided to help with some gift baskets for our church. So I take a gift basket to a hotel and the first thing out of their mouth was, do you have a business card? And I think I know this is a ministry. And I said, well, no, you need to get a business card. We need you to do baskets for us. So that's how I went home, called my husband, said, look, I need a business card. What's the name? And so Heavenly Treats was born. That's awesome. So, I mean, did you just, did you think about the business name for a day or two? Or you're just like, oh, it's going to be Heavenly Treats. It basically was born that evening. And the reason we kind of did the Heavenly Treats because we felt like it was a God thing through our church. And then my niece was very creative. And so she came up with the stars in the logo. So we've never really changed our logo. It's been 10 years we've had the same logo. And it just was a perfect match. Once it kind of Both of my husband and I looked at it and we said, this is what we need. And so we did the number four, the letter U to make it unique. I love that. That's awesome. That's such a cool story. I feel like a lot of like newer entrepreneurs that I work with, they're actually like planning out their entrepreneur Mm -hmm. journey, which is in our industry is weird because most of us get started because of church or mm-hmm. friends or we're creative and we kind of take it for granted and like we don't know that that it truly is a gift from God and like make it into a business and serve others and you can make a living off of it and that's okay so that's awesome so you started out mainly I know in a ministry and churches and then did you do a lot of corporate stuff I do once we came after I've like I said, started three times. The first few times I realized I was very custom back in the beginning. So if someone had a baby shower, then I would do, uh, I'd get requests for those. So I would do like four or five different themes, which was really time consuming. So after I started the second time, I thought, okay, I really need to do some more corporate. So I hit more of the hotel industry when we were in the Memphis South Haven area, but I still was doing too much custom. And, and I, don't, I don't know how to explain that, but it, you don't really have a good match with, I mean, of your time because you're doing so much personal shopping and things like that. Once we got into Nashville, I rethought things and I really looked at how I had ran the business the first two times is what I say. And I made sure that I was going to hit more of a target market. And so I started really thinking about what I want to do. Now, that doesn't mean I don't do custom. I love doing custom. I still do custom, but I now really focus on more of the corporate, the hospitality industry, and now into the wedding industry, because what we do can be used in every aspect. And that's the beauty of this, especially once we pulled in the local using the local products and really gaining the culture of Nashville, then our signature gift became something that could be used for corporate, hospitality, and now even into the weddings or birthdays, whatever. So that's the beauty of this kind of business and how it's evolved is what's exciting. So just to recap, it's like finding a strategy to be able to multiply Mm -hmm. And not just do one custom basket. But what I want our audience to understand is you still do very custom, but you multiply that. And that's what I love about you. Because when I first saw some of your stuff, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And then I I reached out to you to thank a couple of our vendors. Mm -hmm. We'd just gotten done with a huge, massive three-day Indian wedding. And I am really big into also customizing things like thank yous. So being able to go and pick out like specific wines for them and knowing that even though they're all dudes, they're all guys, Mm -hmm. they still enjoy relaxation things. Now, they're not going to go buy it for themselves. But if somebody gives them a gift with a hydration mask or a foot mask, They'll use it. Mm -hmm. They might do it behind the scenes with their wife. But it's like, I love giving those things that people aren't going to go buy for themselves. And you still allow people to be hands on with that, which I love because I remember in Nashville, I would say it's been as soon as like four or five years ago. 
as the planner, we were doing the bags and the boxes. And I'm all about being creative and I I would love doing it. But like I've got so many other things logistically and with the design that we have to oversee. I just didn't have time. And then, you, you know, you do have to get more staff and it just became a burden. And so there's only one really good local place that do baskets but now they do so many in high volume and ship all over the place that that customization has kind of gone down the drain a little bit and it's more about that price for profit and the masses which again I get it we all have to want to scale our business but if you take that personalization out of it it just becomes very different and especially for weddings Mm -hmm. it's got to be personal so I do want you to share with them like what you did and what you put together for some of our photo video team and then the two amazing directors at this venue, they're just not normal, like in a really amazing way. Like most venues open the door and they go to their office or I never see them and then they lock the door at the end of the night. These guys worked their asses off. I mean, I felt like I needed to add them to my payroll. They were just so enthra- enthralled and like loved everything that we were doing. Like they never missed a beat. They're like, okay, how can we help? Like, what do we need to do next? And I'm just like, gosh, I want to do something really special for them. So it was just kind of like meant to be when we met because I really don't have time, but like I want to put time in to say thank you. And you just took care of that. So like, can you explain to our yes. listeners like what you put together and just from a branding perspective too? Yes. So what what she was talking about was personalization and customization. And that really is what sets us apart. And even though we do the masses and we do huge orders of our little gifting boxes or our, our signature gifts, uh, which is the guitar case, which is what we did for your two clients, um, we still go in and do personalization on it. And through that, we can do, whether it's their favorite snacks, maybe a savory, maybe somebody likes savory versus uh, sweet. So we will do that if they have a, a flavor that they like. So little things like that, we will individually do each of those gifts. We also put in on our printed ribbon, which is the is one of the things that we kind of got branded for is the big bows and, and the printed ribbon. We will put logos or their names or just a little sentiment that says what you're trying to convey in that gift. The ones that we did for yours was really kind of fun because, like you said, you had some um, spa products that you wanted to put in there. You had some specific wines so what we did was we knew that it was going to like the one was going to three guys so we made sure that each bottle that was there the the kind of wine that they liked we made sure that we put their name on it so when they opened that that gift basket they knew that that was theirs. And then we kind of grouped some of their favorite snacks around that bottle. And even though it was a guitar case, which was very ideal for them, um, you know, their little sections were in there. Or there was a group uh, product that they all could share. And I remember when I did take it, because I delivered that personally, um, their faces lit up. They were like, Really? This is for us, you know, and I said, yes, and read the card because it's going to kind of let you know what's going on with this. Um, The other one, which I just absolutely have fell in love with these two, uh, they were so enthralled with it. Matter of fact, we met them at the gate because the gate wouldn't open for me, um, which was kind of fun. It was one of those fun moments that we had. And it was like, oh my gosh, it was the, it was like I had given him this huge gift or it was Christmas. Or, I mean, the excitement that he had for when he received this. And the funny thing was, he was like, okay, let's take a selfie and, you know, asking me, how do I get in contact with you? And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is coming from someone else. Cause I don't, I want them to know that we're making you look good. This is, this is what our job is, is whatever we create Yes, I want myself to look good, of course, because it's coming from me, but I want the client to feel like they were so special and that we did exactly what their expectation are beyond. Usually it's beyond. And so, and when that recipient opens it, they are so wowed by it 
that they're so quick to call or so quick to let them know, hey, I received this gift from you and thank you. And it, it's all about making our clients feel good about what they're doing and thanking them. And then the recipient just feeling such an, I mean, it's like Christmas morning. And you know how we all love to feel when we open that birthday gift or that Christmas gift, we want to feel that. And that's what we try to do with every gift. I love that. I think also like in the hospitality industry, a lot of us who do a lot of weddings, for example, we're so used to just taking care of other people. Like that's what we do and that's what fulfills us and that's our why. Like that's why we're on earth and mm. um, and it is to help others and to, to give back. And so sometimes it's nice to just remember those people and, you know, thank them for everything that they're doing, right. even though it's what they do every day, that um, they need to be recognized for that, that they go above and beyond and guys like not everybody goes above and beyond anymore like the market can be so saturated sometimes it's just it's really hard to find like good customer service these days um so since you've been branching out into the wedding industry um is there any differences between like the corporate clients and the wedding clients that you're finding so far not really because everybody you have a theme or you have a color combination clients in the corporate world have the same thing they'll have i just worked with one that said you know for july we want it to be american made we want so we came up with a little gift that was you know with the patriotic feel um so a wedding planner would feel the same way they were like oh, this is the same color you know we want this logo i mean a lot of the brides now have logos and things like that so we just kind of use the same principle that we do with our corporate clients we just kind of follow it with the wedding industry and even with like the party favors or the wedding uh wedding event plan i mean what is the favors that you use on the table. Yeah. Um, you know, we try to do the ribbon to convey whatever message that that bride and groom wants to say to thank their guests for coming, whether it is a, uh, you know, a cookie and we just do the ribbon on there that says, you know, thank you for celebrating with us or the dates or whatever, or if we provide them with a piece of chocolate that is created just for them with their logo or their picture. We can actually put a picture on a piece of chocolate, which is, you know, something t different than you can get at a normal place, you know, if you're ordering something. So we just try to make things to be more personal and, and really get the feel of what that bride and that groom is wanting to convey to their guests. Same thing with our gifting. So if they have an out of town guest, we typically kind of steer them to the local products because that's what people love when they come into town. They want to feel what Nashville's about. So our guitar case works wonderful in that. Or if it's just a little box of something, let us do that. Let us help you. So you're not having to put those bags together or those bows together or whatever. That's just another thing that we can take off of your plate. And I have a team that works on it. We can get them out there, deliver them to the hotels and it's finished and you're not having to worry about it. So that's that's one of the things that we love to do and I think that just by finding ways to personalize it whether you know someone's gluten free or someone is you know needs water instead of you know something to drink um, you know the, whatever the problem is or the dietary restriction we try to do that in each basket so it makes it more personal for them I love that I mean so you know there's all different types of clients that you probably deal with and um, as a planner, like I kind of get this question a lot. And so I wonder what your take is on this. So you have two different types of people. You could have one type of client that's like, you know, like when I came to you and I said, you know, these are very specific and they want this, 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 and this. Not that I told you what to do like creatively, but I just wanted it to be part of that. And then you have other clients where they're like, I just need to make something look really special as if I put a lot of thought and effort into this, like just make sure it's badass <laughs> and uh, just sign my name to it. And do you approach that where do you love that or is it helpful when people give you more direction or do you like to be more creative? And then and this is like a two part question. And then do, how do you drive that? Like, do you tell people, well, what's how much are you allocating for these gifts? Because, for example, you know, I think I said, well, 
you know, $100 towards this and then just do whatever you think. So what do you prefer? Like what type of client? Do you like some direction or do you like a little bit of both? I know it's a trick question. Actually, I do well with both because I kind of get, I kind of judge people, not judge, but I kind of read people as I'm talking over the phone or if I meet a client, if they really want to be hands-on, then I let them be hands-on as much as I can. Now, I do rein them in, and first thing we talk about, what's your budget? Because ultimately, that's really where it starts. So if they have no idea of a budget, then I tell them, why don't you look at my website? Because there's a lot of variety on the website. Check out what you see. If you see something that you really like, but maybe it's not in the price point that you're thinking, then talk to me because there's there's a chance that I may can make a smaller version or a bigger version or whatever, but we can tweak things. So I always talk through that with them. I do ask them, what is is there any restrictions or is there any uh, do they have any favorites? Now, if they really want to be real specific, uh, then we kind of have to talk about it being a personal shopping where I have to go out and, and purchase things. So we, we need to build in a little bit of extra in the budget just because unless they want to provide me with those things. Now, that's, a, that's another alternative, and a lot of people do do that. They'll say, oh, well, let me just go pick it up. I love that. You go pick up, tell me what it is, um, and then I build it. So, you, so that's one way that we work it. The other way, I love when I find that I've, I've got trust from these clients. So typically will have somewhat they'll give me some direction or I have had some that says I don't care what you do here's my budget I need 50 of these I need them by this point can you do that sure I can do that this is what I can do for you so I kind of give them what I think I can do in that budget and chances are that's all they say to me And then I deliver and they're fine. And, you know, they'll say, oh, my gosh, everybody loved them. They were more than what I expected. So it's either way. I mean, I guess my favorite would be that that they just give me carte blanche and I just do whatever because I kind of can pull stuff together uh, if I have a direction of what theme or, you know, um, really it's I hate to say it, but it's really driven by the budget. And, and what their likes and their dislikes are. So we tried it. We tried Did I answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, I've worked with both. Yeah. And I've worked with some that I will say micromanaged more. And I think one thing that does set us apart from the local or other gift basket companies is we, we try to follow what you're wanting. Okay. And then we take a picture of it. Now, I realize some people will go like, oh my gosh, who has time to stop? take a picture of it and send it to the client. But to me, I feel like I would prefer to do that. And if if I'm not on the right direction, I don't want to spend all this time and then get ready to send them this picture and say, this is what we're delivering. And then they're like, oh my gosh, that's not what I wanted. So I tend to kind of give them a parameters. This is what I'm putting in it. This is what I'm doing. I text them a picture of it. And they absolutely love that because they they feel like they're part of the gift giving. So almost everything that we go out, unless they have done multiple, you know, orders and it's the same stuff, which I have one that's doing that right now. I don't send him pictures anymore because he, he already knows what he's getting. I've already sent him the first picture. So, but we do that with almost every client. We send them a picture of the basket before it's wrapped. Once it's wrapped with their printed ribbon, I send another picture and this is what I'm delivering. Sometimes I even get a picture when I'm delivering if the client is like, oh my gosh, you know, this is wonderful. We had a dermatologist that we did a huge basket for. And so I asked him, I said, I I know this is like a big, you know, big gift, but would you mind letting me take a picture? And he was like, oh my gosh, no, do it. And so I sent that client the picture of it and she was just like over the moon about it because she said, I felt like I was there with you delivering it. So that's just some of the little things that we do to make it more personalized and customized. I love that. And also like too, I know you've touched on it, but I want the people listening to understand like the bows, they're not like 1980 bows guys. Like these are branded, like the ends are like cut perfect 
And like the fact that you brand and put people's logos on there, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. Like, I love that branding opportunity that you have there. Um, I feel like as far as being special and unique about your service, I mean, I feel like we touched on that. I feel like there's um, so many ways that, that you're already unique. Um, one question, and just in case some of our listeners don't really understand, like, when we say like local products and like, what does that mean? Because some people may not know, like right. until I got into this industry and people came to me and said, well, we want gift bags with local products. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, Goo Goo Clusters and Moon Pies and RC Cola, like things that were from Nashville. But we don't really, again, get that a lot anymore. I think that local products has expanded so much. So give us an idea of like what that really means and what that looks like. When we search out local products, we we do have like the Goo Goo's and the Moon Pies and things like that. But we went a step further. So Nashville's known for the um, whiskey here. So I don't have a license to do that, to sell whiskey, but we sell what we call whiskey balls or we do a whiskey cake or we do praline pecans that are soaked in the whiskey. So that's some of the little local products that people absolutely love. So we find vendors that have something unique that really fits with the the local culture. Another one is a shortbread that's locally. And I had found them several years ago before I actually moved here, loved their product. And then when I got here, I was like, oh, that's right, they're here. So that was one of those things that I was excited about because they have a hot Nashville flavor. They have a sweet flavor. So we can actually use those in our products or our gift baskets. And it brings in that local culture. Um, We're always looking for new ones. So if you know somebody, please let me know. Uh, You know, anybody that's new upcoming, we're going to, we actually are going to get, um, Olive and Sinclair. We just connected with them. So we're going to be putting their products in our baskets this fall. So that's exciting. And they're a chocolate. They are company. a chocolate company. Yes. And so, um, but, but yeah, it, we're trying to find things that are artisan flavors that will actually just let people know that when they come into the community or this city, that we have a lot to offer other than just the music and the, the arts and things that are here. We have unique flavors, wonderful food. And, and when we send to other, like I've worked with several other people, um, event planners. And so we had one that was out of Houston. So we searched out products that were for Houston and we put those in there. We had them shipped here. We put them together, sent them back. And they were like shocked that they actually had a little taste of Houston. Same thing for another location we did. We searched out, made sure we had products that were actually made there. So they felt like they were getting something from there locally. And we're not even based there. So that's what that was so unique about us is that we really do try to pull in things that are um, pertinent to that event. So whatever the event is, if, if you wanted to do Goo Goo's, we would get Goo Goo's or we would do Moon Pies and RC Colas. What, whatever it is, we try to do. But the Whiskey Balls is probably our favorite. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, that was my next question is like, what are your top things right now that your clients like love? They're like, we have to have that. I would say we have a chocolate guitar that is kind of our signature line and it's a wonderful smooth chocolate so we have that in um milk chocolate and white chocolate right now and so those go into almost everything we get we uh, deliver locally right now with the heat we don't do our chocolate so we're stuck with um, moon pies and chocolate shortbreads and things like that to give them that sweet flavor that's the only bad thing about living in the south is the heat but Locally, everybody gets a chocolate guitar. Uh, the whiskey balls, the praline pecans, the chocolate be- uh, covered pecans are amazing. Um, there's so many things. <laughs> there's so many amazing things. Well, I know when I got a chocolate guitar from you, it had it was like brushed in gold. Is that normal? It is not. That is specially done for us because of our colors being a black and gold theme. The vendor that I use said, how can I make this unique for you? And 
we said, I love gold on it. So she put a dusting of gold. Then we've gone so far as they used to come in these little bags. And I kept thinking, it just needs a little touch of something else. So I called her back and said, hey, I really need this to be a little higher quality looking. So she found a clear box with a gold background. And then we put our label on it. And so it, it made it completely different than what the original product was versus now. So that's how we do. We are always searching for something to set us apart from whoever's around us, our competition, which I don't even pay attention to the competition because I just keep focusing on what I'm doing and making my clients happy. And I love that. It, uh, when I got that guitar, I almost was like, this is too pretty to eat. And it like sat on my counter for a good week. And then I took pictures of it <laughs> several times. And then I'm like, okay, you know, there's one day where it's like, okay, I'm going to try the chocolate. And it was delicious. I'm not even a chocolate person. Like I don't even love chocolate or love candy. But you know, there are some days where it's like, nah, I get a little bit of a sweet tooth. And it was so good. Like you said, it was like that creamy milk. I think it it must have been like maybe February or March. It wasn't hot outside, right. um, you know. So are there, I know that you um, are involved in, there's a much bigger picture here. Um, you're very involved in the whole gift basket network, um, the big conferences and things like that. And um, I love working with people who want to grow and educate themselves on how to be better and better and better and want to keep learning. Um, Would you say that going to those conferences are really helpful or is it more about the networking or the education? I would say that attending those events is very helpful. Um, When we started deciding to come back into the business here in Nashville, there was a conference that was that same month. And I thought, oh, I really don't have any income to do that. You know, so you kind of step, take a step back and think, oh, should I do it? I went that year with the thought of what can I do different? And so I went and I spoke to everyone that is very um, successful in the business. And I felt like, again, I'm one of those that I feel like God plants me in the places that I need to go. And so every person that I talked to, I would say, if you had this chance to start over again, what would you do differently? And and I know they all got tired of that, but they were all excited to see me back in the business too. So it was kind of a, a, you know, rekindling our friendships and things like that. But I will say that that was a defining point Uh, in our business because I did go with the heart of saying, I want to learn something new. I want to come back and run this business totally different. And I feel like I did that. This last year has been an incredible year. And I don't know if you want me to kind of go on that, but um, a year ago, we actually were surprised by our industry and we were published in our uh, industry wide uh, magazine and I was on the cover, which I had no idea I was going to be on the cover, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> yes. I got a call like at 10 o'clock at night and said, um, you might want to check Facebook. And there was my face on a magazine cover. And I'm thinking, what am I like? Not awake. You know, I mean, it was really weird. It was one of those moments. And so, and it was about how we took a gift basket company that was based, you know, totally from Texas, moved to the Memphis area, and now we're in Nashville, and how we really took the Nashville culture and put it in our gifting. And so, um, and it was geared to new people to let them know that they need to find their niche. And even in the wedding industry, I'm sure you have niches that you can get into that really you have those talents. So you need to expound on those. And so it gives you that, that's what we did. We kind of put ourselves in the middle of the lane and that's where we're going. Then later on in the year, as the year progressed, I was still like kind of crazy over this magazine. I then got to share my story at our gift basket, our national gift basket convention last year in um, New Jersey and New York. And so we got to tell our story. And the one thing that I really um, was impressed with, the person that asked me to do this, wanted them to let me tell how we had been resilient. That was her word, was how you had been resilient through the past 10 years and actually the last five years because my husband had been ill. And yet I kept plugging along with this business. And I did have to take a couple of years off because we had no idea if he was going to 
um, make it through the the situation that he was in. And so, um, and even since then, we've had some health issues that just has been kind of rocked our world. And yet I've had the biggest year ever in my business and we've gone mentally and physically with my husband at the lowest point we've ever had. And yet I still keep plug, plugging along. And, and that was her big word is I want you to share that story to let people know that you can be resilient no matter what the journey is, no matter what the obstacles are. You have to just keep going and keep focused on what you're wanting to happen. And it'll come through. It will come through your business and it'll work out. And that's what I, that's really what's happening. And so uh, then fast forward another little couple of months, I got asked to write a, a chapter in a book, which I'm like, oh my gosh, this is becoming more than I've ever thought could have personally ever happened. And so that will be published this uh, August when I'm at convention. And so we'll be able to share that with all the new, uh, this, this industry has really grown in the last five years. And so this probably will be our biggest convention. And so I'm pretty excited about that and knowing that I'm going to actually be helping new people and sharing how I do the customization. And that was the biggest thing was she wanted me to share, what do you do that's customized and personalized and how you make your, your gifts so unique? Because that's really the story of our business is making things so customized, so unique, and yet we can reproduce them and we can make, you know, every client feel special. Um, And then fast forward again, another thing she's wanting me to teach now. So we will actually be sharing how to design a basic design. And, you know, it's one of those things, looking back, I'm thinking, I would have never dreamed that this would have happened. And so now I have no idea where this business is going. I'm just along for the ride. And I feel like God has a plan and I'm just going to continue with it. Then you have to deal not with just running the business, but being the face of the business and then you have your family and then you have all these challenges that God sends you. And um, I know that when my dad was sick and then my sister got sick all around the same time and I didn't really want anybody to know because I didn't want them A, to feel sorry for me or B, think that like my work was going to suffer from me you know, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that's so depressing. And oh my gosh. And I'm like, no, like everything happens for a reason. I can't say why, but we're going to make the best of it. And there's always a learning opportunity. But at the end of the day, if you're doing what you love to do, and that's where you have to evaluate, okay, sick family, time's limited before heaven, heavenly trees, (laughs) no pun intended. Um, It's like, how do you spend your time? And being a business owner, I will say my work never suffered because I loved what I did. And a lot of people said, well, you just don't want to deal with like the sadness. I'm like, why do, why does everyone have to be so negative again? Like let's enjoy the time that we have. And yes, it's sad and yes, it sucks. But I came from a mental health background and I can tell you working in a mental hospital and a morgue, those situations sucked. I mean, we have a roof over our head. We can still have a thriving business and yeah, it's a lot. It is. But when you love what you do, you never stop and think about it. Exactly. You're like, you just have to keep going. Yes. And um, I love that. So being in Nashville, um, you know, we work with a lot of country music and all types of people in the music industry. And so have you had the opportunity to work with anybody in the music industry since you've been in Nashville? We actually just had the opportunity to help with the swag bags is what I call them. Do you know what that stands for? I don't. Stuff we all get. Oh, I love it. I love it. That is perfect. So anyway, we got a call a couple of days before the CMT award night. Okay. And we just, that's a big night. That is a big night. So CMA is here. And we had a vendor that was commissioned to do some signs that had a, the CMT award night and it had the skyline of Nashville on it and they had painted them. And she was in a panic because she had to deliver them within 24 hours down to Bridgestone Arena to have them put in those swag bags. The problem was they didn't know how to put their marketing material on that piece of artwork is basically what it was. So she called me saying, hey, I've heard you can do stuff like this. What can you do for me? And so we picked them up. 
We put them in some cello, made them look like they were actually a gift, put a big signature bow, which is what we're known for, and we put their logo to let them know that it was from that company. And we were able to put our label and our business card and their marketing material behind that. Now these went to all of the nominees for the CMT awards. So it was Blake Shelton and you know all the names that were you know nominated. And so each one of them received one of these pieces of artwork in their swag bag. So that was a major feather in our cap for Nashville. So that's a really cool opportunity and it sounds like it happened so quick. Yes. Like overnight, we'll, we'll fix you up. That's awesome. Yes. It was actually within about, I would say, 12 hours, 20 hours at the most, because we actually did not pick them up until late in the evening or started them late in the evening. And I had them delivered at Bridgestone by four o'clock and there was 75 of them. So we basically had to wow. some, some hours, but I have a team that did it and it was wonderful. We had a great time doing it. So sometimes, guys, the opportunities that you don't even know are about to come down the pike, sometimes you just have to say, yes, I can do this. And all of your rules are out the door where it's like, well, it's really best if we have seven days advanced. But when you get an opportunity like that, and you have no idea in the future, like what business will come from that, which is amazing. So that's an amazing opportunity. Well, I will say when we drop them off, the person that is in charge of the swag bags, she was really impressed. Now, here's another thing. I thought, okay, here's an opportunity for me. So I brought out of my car a nicely done Music Row gift box with the guitar case and said, we would like to help you enjoy this craziness right here. Y'all have some treats to enjoy. And she again was like, oh my gosh, you do this. So it was another opportunity just to kind of say we're available. And I did say that next year, let me know if you're needing help to pack the swag bags. I will help you. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. It's, It's exciting. That's awesome. So I know that you do a lot of networking and Do you have any advice for new people or not new in the business? Because you're definitely not new and you're not new to Nashville. But if you're branching out into other industries, what advice would you give people? I would say always be open to your surroundings. So I tend to sometimes be a wallflower. Now, my husband would say that that is not true. He says I meet as never I never meet a stranger, basically. But really, internally, I do feel a little bit like intimidated, especially when I went to my first networking with the wedding industry. I was thinking, okay, I'm this expert over here in gifting, but how do I mesh it with the wedding industry? Even though I was doing little gifts for them, but it kind of was a a little bit of intimidation because I'm meeting all these event planners and things like that. But I will just say, it's one of those things you have to put yourself out there. And for instance, like I met you, Angela, it was a moment when I'm walking along this, this venue is gorgeous and they had different outlying buildings and things and, and decorated. And so I was trying to get around to see all the things and kind of get ideas. And as I'm walking, I'm thinking, you know, I've probably passed a couple of other people that I didn't say anything to. And I thought I am here to network. And why am I here spending two hours doing this if I'm not going to put myself out there? So basically, I would just say, don't let that inner voice, or if you are feeling a little intimidated, don't let that overtake you because just put yourself out there. Just say, hey, this is my first time here. I mean, that's really what I said to you. And we got to talking. And then when you spoke, I was like, oh my gosh, some of the things that you said really resonated with me. And then I went back up to you and said, hey, you know, I really enjoyed that. And then the next thing I know, we're talking about a podcast. So it's it's amazing to me if I looked back over the last year of just the nuggets of time when I did network and how I if I had not said something to somebody, or if I hadn't set in a certain area of the, I mean, you just have to be open at all time. Always have your business cards available. I have been in those situations where I'm thinking, I don't have a business card. What in the world is wrong with me? 
or have little gifts. We do little marketing gifts and we sell a lot of those because clients are out there marketing and they need a little something. And that's what you touched about earlier was the fact that we had logos on there and we, you know, had wording that kind of captured their attention. Because if you give a business card, what happens to that business card? Sometimes it may get into the pile or sometimes it gets lost in the purse or in the briefcase or in the trash or whatever. But if you give a gift, with that business card, and that's what I did that night, I was handing out these cute little treats, then people remembered me. And and I have talked to a couple of them since, besides you, and they've like, oh yeah, you're the one that gave me the brittle. Brittle, the brittle, brittle that's what, what it was. Yes, the brittle is what they remembered, and that's what I tell my clients. If you want that business card to be memorable, then make sure that you have something with it that they're going to remember it. If you're going to drop off at venues or uh, real estate offices, wh- whatever your industry is, take something with you beside that business card. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Tell our listeners where they can find you, your website, and how you like to be contacted. We have a website, which is Heavenly Treats, the number four, the letter U, dot com. Um, you can call me anytime in that number. And I always get it. I always want to give my cell number because it's a Texas number and people don't want to use that. So I'll give you the local number, <laughs> 615-283-8146. But I can do email, text, whatever. We're on Instagram, which is uh, Heavenly Treats for You LLC. And then Facebook is our biggie. Uh, we do a lot of Facebooking. If you want to follow us on Facebook, it is the same. It's Heavenly Treats for You LLC. Anything else that I can think of? No, that's it. Yeah. We, we love to talk to clients. So feel free to give me a call or text me, email me. So Sheila, as we wrap up here, do you have any exclusive offers for our listeners today? Yes, Angela, we sure do. So anyone that is listening today and lets me know that they heard the podcast through Angela, we will give them free ribbon printing, which means personalization. If they want to give me their logo or if they want to say some sentiment on their gift basket, we will offer that for free for our listeners today. That is awesome. Thank you so much. That's amazing. You are welcome. We are, had a great time today. Well, thank you, Sheila, for being here today. And guys, check out her website. Seriously, if you need any type of special gift to thank someone or gift boxes for your guest or your client and their guest, feel free to contact Sheila. As she said, they ship all around the world. And I can promise you that she will make sure that it's perfect because I've had personal experience. So again, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, Angela, for having me. And I've really had a great time sharing my story. Y'all have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.